Hey everyone, it's Ask Finola How. <laughs> so, welcome. And um, today, today's Ask Finola How is a great question. It's that time of year and we have a little bit of a theme for this month, it being January, which is all about planning. I am flooded with planning questions at the moment. So here's the question for today, which is Ask Finola How, episode 59. And here was the question, which I love. I always love these questions. How do I plan for today that builds for tomorrow? Which is a great question. And they've gone on to say, I'd love to finally get rid of the noise in my head and learn how to marry strategy and tactics. Can you help? Yes, I can help. I can give you a little bit of guidance here from my own experience and from working with so many other people. The noise is... A place, the noise is something that you have to find peace with or find quiet with and to help you center yourself to actually plan properly and plan to help yourself, you know. So there is a, a space and I love that space of planning because it is where there is no noise. It's a choice you make about what you want your year to go like, okay. Let's just focus on this one for a second. Let me just move off this for a second and you'll get the idea in a minute. And it's, so back to the question, which is how do I plan for today that builds for tomorrow, okay? So the first thing I kind of want to bring to everyone's attention, and one is that entrepreneurs hate planning. That's a reality. It's, they're freaked out by it, they're frightened by it, but when they realize and find a method that works for them, they actually embrace it tenfold, twentyfold, because they know that it works, okay? So just to ground this, the top, one of the top 10 reasons, and I would probably say top three reasons that businesses fail is from lack of planning, lack of honest planning. And you can look up any uh, source of, you know, entrepreneur, Forbes, whatever you like, you're going to find that in the top 10 at least of reasons why businesses fail is lack of planning. OK, so we need to change that and acknowledge that there is a fear of planning here. So what can we do about it? And the thing that and that has changed over the years because of things like, you know, an agile approach to everything, not really embrace, you know, not getting preoccupied with this 40 page plan. So the whole idea is that your planning needs to be simplified. And that's how you can marry short term with long term. And if you make it really simple, and I'm this huge advocate of the one page plan, because the one page plan and loads of you have heard me talk about this before, which is the one page plan makes you focus on what matters and only what matters, because there is no room on the page for anything more than that. You don't need all the blurb. You don't need all the waffle. You just need the essence that acts as your guide for the year ahead. OK, so that's. That's your starting point for simplification is to do it on one page. The second thing that I would say to you is acknowledge that short term and long term goals are actually different. Short term planning and long term planning are different. They may seem to be at odds with each other, but they're not. If you actually look at them simultaneously, well, not simultaneously, but look at them in a very connected way, they work so beautifully together that actually makes your plan deliver every time. So when I'm thinking about, so say, for example, we're moving into, we're in 2023 now. We want to make sure that our plan works for 2023 so that when we hit the end of the year, we've gone, wow, I did all that. And yeah, maybe I didn't do that piece, but I did this. That's what you want to happen. So here's how I want you to look at it. Entrepreneurs, by our very nature, love to be in the doing space. Just love to be doing, 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 because you get a kick out of it. We see results, we see them now. It's that whole instant gratification thing. So that's the, the loudest voice that's going to be in the entrepreneur's head. That's going to be in your head, that's going to be in my head. So if it's the loudest voice, I always say this, you always work off, you know, address the cream first. Agre address what's loudest first so you can get to that quiet space to get to the thinking piece. So the loudest piece is, what do I have to worry about today and in every day, in that operational focus? And so in the everyday, you're thinking about things like the sales levels, 
what tar what sales targets that you have for every single month you're thinking about well this is what i want you to be thinking about actually because often in smaller businesses that's a very passive approach that's a very meandering approach that you may do you may do an annual planning session with somebody and say i want to hit such and such a target but the reality is we need to know how you're going to hit that target so we start i start with another one page plan and it's one of my own templates which is build a calendar that delivers and in that template and i use it all the time and it's in front of my face all the time it's pasted on my wall so it keeps me focused and it shows me what are my what's my calendar for the year ahead so what are my key dates what are the things that i'm you know what are the things i'm developing campaigns on that i'm promoting or that i'm wanting to uh, support my customers on but i am thinking about key points in the year where sales have to be delivered and they need to add up to my target for the end of the year so if if i can look at over the course of January, February, March, right up until December, what am I doing every day in every month? Actually, just what am I doing every month to hit that target? So we look at key dates. I look at what is my campaign? What is the perhaps the lead magnet or the webinar that I'm running or the initiative I'm running that's designed to sell such and such a product? And what is the target for the sales of that product? And I see all of that on one page and I'll start to look at it and even even looking at that and watching as you add pieces in because you notice that maybe two campaigns are running too close together or maybe that there's a big gap in your year where you're not selling anything. Now, we don't want to be selling all the time because our customers don't like it, but we need to have a steady cash flow coming into the business. So we want to make sure that we spread all of these campaigns throughout the course of the year and that we're hitting all the marks instead of what normally happens, which is doing everything at the last minute. We want to make sure that we are prepared, that we achieve a certain level of success that we can build on and repeat and improve, test, measure, improve throughout the course of the year with key targets that we're able to measure at each point so that we can adjust if we don't hit those targets, okay? The other thing that I like to see on that build a calendar that delivers is when I figured out I want to run such and such a campaign in this particular month, what is the core content that I'm gonna release in that month to support that campaign? So it also helps me plan my social media and my content strategy for the whole year ahead all on one page. And that is tactical, short term, everyday, operational, one page, ticks the box for me. I'm looking at it on screen. And then you say to yourself, which is back to our question of how do I marry short term with long term? So I've figured out the short term. I've got my focus for every day. You know, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm looking at this is what I, we're in January. This is what I need to work on, okay? But when you look at the whole year, I have a one pager again, because I love them. And this one is called One Year at a Time. And very strongly in that one pager, we think about the five-year goals. And we break the five-year goals into what needs to be achieved or what needs to move to get to this end point. Because these are, this is all growth levers. These are all things that turn the business, that are out of the everyday. So in the everyday calendar that delivers, we're doing the stuff we kind of know. But in order to boost the numbers in that everyday piece, we know things have to grow or to move and that there are levers that actually help move that growth. And that's what we think of in an annual plan. What are the levers for growth? And I usually try to think about one lever per quarter so that I'm thinking about what's the fundamental shift in how I do business now that will take me to the next level. And can I do one a quarter? Will it take more than two quarters? Can I break it down so that it feels more bite-sized? Because we love a 90-day world. So it's really understanding what can be done in each quarter. But that annual plan is focused on growth levers, not everyday actions. 
and you choose the growth levers to support the everyday actions in your calendar. What can I do as what growth lever can I bring into my business? Can I apply in my business that makes a difference to those numbers? And also, are those growth levers building something up that I can reap the benefits of next year? And that's how we marry short term with long term. Okay, so the other thing I kind of want to share with you is one of the things that I often see with entrepreneurs is this reticence of, you know, putting pen to paper or starting the plan and the plan and it's scaring them. And it's this idea that you think you have to have clarity in order to do a plan. In actual fact, the plan is what gives you, gives you the clarity because you can see the numbers, you can see the pathway, you can see the journey ahead. And that's what gives you clarity. Lack of planning means there is no clarity. The act of planning gives you the clarity. So it's messy. It's meant to be messy because you're figuring it out. That's the process. The plan is not, is not the end game. Well, it is actually the end game, but it's not about the perfect plan. It's the act of sitting down and figuring it out and then implementing it. So know this. You don't have to have all the answers before you start your planning process. Doing the planning process gives you the answers. That's a big message, okay? The other thing I'd say to you is, when you do it like this with one page, it's actually fun because you start to see things. You know, if you did a big template of 40 page business plan that, you know, nobody wants to do, you will be exhausted even looking at it. OK, whereas if you take this kind of one page approach, approach, which is distilled information, it starts to become fun. It starts to allow you to be creative. It starts to allow you to think outside the box and really move your thinking. You're allowing yourself to get rid of the everyday stuff by having that calendar. And then you get to thinking bigger to move you towards your long term goals because you've created space for those two types of thinking and you've created space in a way that they serve each other. OK. The other thing to say to you is never lie in your plan because the plan is for you, written by you, for you. It's not a plan you're giving to anybody else. So if you lie in your plan, you're giving yourself a stick to beat yourself with, and that doesn't help anybody. So when you're writing down, you need to be honest with yourself of, are these targets reflected, reflective of where I am in my business? Does it make sense to reach that high or to reach that low based on where I am? Be honest here so that you give yourself the best chance of success. And the more that you do it, the more successful you will be about delivering on what you set yourself as a target. So don't lie to yourself. Give yourself the space to grow, every chance to grow, okay? So I hope that makes sense to you. And if you'd like to know more about my planning process, which is articulated here, some of it, most of it, is articulated here. If you click on a link in the bio, you will see a link to the Powerful Planner, where those templates are there just for you. And if you have any questions, reach out. I love to answer them. Have a great day. Take care.